This year's 2018 NHL Draft has a prospect who has first-round potential. He could be the best power forward after Brady Kachuk, and he's 6'5", and we're going to talk about it next. Welcome back to Hockey Scouting Reports. So glad you're here. So glad you're watching. Today we're going to talk about Sarah Noel. And so Noel is 6'5", 209. So there's a lot of great size with his game. Of course, he's a right winger, but he's also one of the best power forwards this draft. When we talk about power forwards, of course, Brady Kachuk is the guy mentioned for this draft. But Sarah Noel has been moving up the rankings throughout the year and looks to be about a 20 to 25th selected first round prospect now a lot of people have him going anywhere from 12th to 30th but i think 20 to 25th is pretty uh decent for him based on the risks that he wants to take on given who he is and who how he plays but there's a lot of upside given the way that his stats have increased year after year his overall skill set and what his projection and comparison is and so before we get into that if you're new to the channel i'm so glad you're here what I do here is every single day we do a prospect report on different prospects. We also do comparison videos between prospects, and we also do deep looks at prospect pools. Most likely tomorrow there'll be a new prospect pool analysis coming out. They're about 40 to 50 minute videos. Currently we have done the Buffalo Sabres, Vancouver Canucks, Montreal Canadiens, and most recently the Detroit Red Wings. So if you haven't checked out any of those and those would be interesting to you, feel free to check them out. Tomorrow will be a very interesting team we're going to talk about. I've had a lot of interesting suggestions, and of course we will get to all of them eventually, but tomorrow should be very interesting. And so right now, though, we're going to get into Sarah Noel, very interesting prospect. So before we get into it, if you enjoy the content of this video, make sure to like. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe for more content. Like I said, it's daily content. And if you have any comments, suggestions, whatever, comment them below. I'm always answering and reading comments, whether it's a suggestion for a new prospect analysis, a new pool analysis, a scouting report, a comparison video, whatever it is. I have a lot of suggestions already set up like in the queue for future videos, but certainly I'm always looking for more suggestions. This video today actually was suggested, I believe it was yesterday or two days ago, to look at Sarah Noel. And so... Uh, following up on that suggestion, I was going to do this guy in a few days anyways, and so I figured why not do it today. And so Sarah Noel, he's Canadian, of course, right winger. He's only 17, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of great size, like I said, 6'5", 209, but being 17, he has a lot of time to develop. And so we know with big players, especially 6'5", skating has always been an issue for these players. And interestingly, every draft always has their big player. Every draft has some guy who's 6'5", and so when we look at it, last year was Michael Rasmussen, of course, ninth overall to the Detroit Red Wings. Rasmussen was having trouble with skating. Big issue for him was speed, agility, skating, and acceleration, and he has worked on that substantially this year. I talked about him a little bit in the Red Wings prospect report a couple days ago, but he looks to be very talented. He is 6'5", uh, 6'6", six, 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 depending where you read. We also see in 2016, Logan Stanley, of course, going to the uh, Winnipeg Jets to eventually uh, play next to Tyler Myers, another defender of great size, and of course, Dustin Bufflin. Logan Stanley, very big guy, 6'5", 6'6", uh, six, 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 even 6'7", six, depending what uh, chart you're reading. He's also someone who has struggled substantially with skating, but also becoming offensive and not just relying on his size and physicality. And as a result, he stayed in juniors for two more years past that draft. He should be in the AHL next year. No one's really sure when he'll hit that NHL, but looking at someone like Tyler Myers, who a lot of people compare him to, it took Tyler Myers a lot of years to really be a substantial, not only stay-at-home defender who's physical, but someone who can be relied on, and especially we see this playoffs with Winnipeg in both their series, that he has been someone that they can rely on. Whether that's against the Predators or the Wild, he has been someone that they could rely on this year. And of course, in 2015, the other big guy was Denis Gurianov. And so Gurianov, he's about 6'3", another guy who struggled with the size. Of course, Dallas Stars took him. He's had a struggling year in the AHL. He's expected to be this nice right wing sniper for the, uh, the um, Dallas Stars. Eventually, most likely he'll get some NHL minutes next year. He did get a few NHL games uh, last season. And so... We see every single year there is a big guy who's always touted as this first-round prospect, and they usually go in the mid to late 
of that first round. Rasmussen went ninth overall, but he was projected to go 18th to 22nd. So usually they are late round picks. Aaron Noel is yet another example of this. He's this year's big guy, 6'5", and he struggles with skating, and he's projected to be anywhere from 20 to 25th. So it's very similar in this long line. And so, of course, Logan Stanley is a defender, so I'm not making any comparisons with these guys, but just saying big players, it is very tough for them to hit the NHL soon. All these guys have yet to be NHL productive. Rasmussen will probably be the first one to do so next season, but that being said, all of them have struggled with skating, with speed, with all of that, and they've had trouble building an offensive game. And so when we look with Sarah Noel, that's something that we have to keep in the back of our minds. And so Noel, OHL, Oshawa, Generals. And so, this season, 62 games played, 28 goals, 25 assists, 53 points, 61 penalty minutes, and a minus 8. And so, the 53 points in 62 games, that's pretty good for someone who, in the season before, his first year in the OHL, all he did was 8 goals, 13 assists for 21 points in 63 games. So, what a massive jump. 8 goals to 28, 13 assists to 25, 21 points to 53. And so... After his first year in the OHL, a lot of people didn't have much expectations for him going into his uh, draft year. People were not expecting him to be a first-round draft pick. Yes, he had great size, and of course, that's always valued, but his offensive game wasn't there to be this true power forward. We look this year, not a point per game, and so we do see a lot of point per game guys go in the first round, but he also brings this great size, and he does bring goal-scoring talent with 28 goals. Of course, 61 penalty minutes, you see he's definitely physical. The issue that we have to also talk about, though, is he only put up 105 shots this season. 105 shots, 53 points, 28 goals. That's not a lot of shots, considering the amount of goals, considering the amount of games. 62 games, 105 shots. He's putting up less than two shots per game on average. When we're talking about this next-gen power forward, who's going to be this great offensive presence because of his size and his game-breaking abilities, you need to put up more than a uh, shot per game. He's not even doing two shots per game. And so 28 goals, if he's putting up 200 shots a game, 28 goals could easily hit 40 goals. And so next year, coming back to the OHL, that's going to be the challenge for him. That's what coaches have tried to work on with him is releasing that shot more he has a great release we'll talk about other skills with him in a bit but he needs to use those skills more he needs to stop relying on the physicality and bring the offensive side because that's what's going to get him drafted higher that's what's going to make him nhl productive and 105 shots is not something i want to see i want to see it a lot higher we look at andre svechnikov the guy is shooting an insane amount and of course i'm not making that comparison svechnikov will be two or three this draft but you need to shoot more if you want to be a sniping right winger. And so we look to the playoffs this year. Five games played, no goals, one assist, 12 penalty minutes, plus or minus of zero. So he's always been this physical presence. But as we see every single year, including back in his midgets in his uh, AAA league, you can see he's always been a physical presence. Over 70 penalty minutes in his AAA season in the year before the OHL, he's always been physical. But each year, he's gotten more and more offensive and more and more of a natural goal scorer. And so, he's certainly transitioning his game to become better productive on the offensive side of it because he's had to work so much on the skating. And when you can build skating to a better level, of course, offensive talents will come with that. And so, 105 shots next year could easily hit 200 or at least 150. I think that's very much possible. But he does need to work on that. And that's going to be the real difference maker. We look at Logan Stanley, the difference maker for him to make the NHL has been, can he work on the skating and can he actually play defense aside from laying great hits? This year he has shown to be defensive, but it took him two seasons after the draft to get there. Sharon Noel is only 17, so certainly he has time, but the game breaker for him to make that NHL roster eventually is can he be more than just a big body? Can he actually produce offensive talents at a consistent level? It'll be interesting to see if he can do that. And so we look at the playoffs last year. And so, like I said, he only had 21 points in that regular season last year before this year, of course. Playoffs last year, three points, nine games, one goal, two assists, nine penalty minutes, and a minus four. So his defensive game has never really been there. You see a lot of minuses everywhere. He put up 53 points this season, still minus eight. So he's always struggled defensively. That physicality, of course, has always been there. He also played in the World Juniors under-18s this year, 
Five games played, two goals, four assists, six points, eight penalty minutes, and a plus three. And so that was a great showing for him, and that vaulted him up into the top 10, top 12 in a lot of scouting reports, in a lot of like best available players, top 10, top 12. And he kind of has sizzled out and followed back to that 20 to 25, but the World Juniors was a very good showing for him. It showed that he can be not only physical with that eight penalty minutes, but certainly those two goals, six points, he can bring that offensive side that a lot of people weren't sure that he had. And so, interesting story with him as well, he was selected 25th overall in the 2016 OHL Priority Selection. And so when he was selected 25th, certainly people believed he was talented, but someone who's getting selected 25th in the OHL selection is probably not going to go 20-25 to 25 in the NHL draft. And the reason I say that is because 25 means 24 players in the OHL are better than him going into that selection, but the NHL draft also includes Russians, players in Finnish leagues, Swedish leagues, Czech leagues, of course all these leagues, even Germany's getting on the board this year. We look at all these teams, and then of course we aren't even talking about the Q, the WHL, the USHL, NCAA, all these teams, USDP, all these ways, all these places are, nest are having more talented players. And so to be 25th selected in the OHL selection, yes, you're decent in the OHL, but transitioning that to an NHL draft two years later, the expectation was that maybe he'll be a third round draft pick. That's kind of what we're talking. And so you have to kind of keep that in the back of your mind. He was visioned to be a third or fourth round draft pick for quite a few years. This year, of course, getting on the board as a first rounder. And so, first overall in the 2016 OHL priority selection was, of course, Ryan Merkley. And that's been a controversial pick with him. Of course, I did do a scouting report on Ryan Merkley. You can check that out. Probably the biggest boomer bust prospect of this draft, definitely for defenders. A lot of issues with him, but a lot of upside. And so, you can check that out if you're interested. Ninth overall in the draft was Barrett Hayden, this great two way center compared to Patrice Bergeron. Also, did a scouting report on him. Twelfth overall was Akil Thomas. Uh, possible center prospect first round and then also 124th was Joe Farabee now Farabee of course played in the USHL going on to the USDP next season or the season after NCAA and so being selected so low it wasn't that he was bad it was because he wasn't expected to go to the OHL that was never an expectation but sometimes you think why not select him we look in the KHL draft they selected Jack Eichel and Connor McDavid in their draft years. They selected them farther down in the draft, but all the same on the off chance that Connor McDavid, for whatever reason, goes to the KHL, why not draft him and have him? More interestingly, if the NHL ever has another lockout, there are places that Eichel and McDavid and others could go. And because the KHL did this, they have that possibility. And so that's kind of what the OHL was doing there. But of course, you have to keep in mind 25th overall for someone like Sarah Noel, that expectation's always been he'd be a third rounder. This year, really putting him on the map. And so, what are his overall skills? Well, despite his overall size, he's actually a good skater. And when we talk about all these big guys, like I mentioned earlier, Logan Stanley especially, size and skating do not go well together. For Sarah Noel, he's a decent skater. Now, last season, when he had those 21 points, skating was a massive issue, and people thought he might even be a third rounder. He, did, he couldn't skate. But he did a lot of work over the summer, a lot of work before the season, and he's really built his skating game, and you can see that his offensive talents skyrocketed because that skating's better. When skating gets better for any player, forward or defense, whoever it is, your offensive talents will get better. That's the way it works. And so good skaters are always valued because in a certain way you can teach at least some level of offensive talent, it's harder to teach skating. Yes, you can, but if you already bring skating talents, it's so much easier to build offensive talents onto that. And so now that he has that skating level, that's why he has jumped into a possible first round consideration. He also has a very powerful stride. Of course, 6'5", you'd expect that. And that leads to having decent speed, but powerful speed, powerful strides, great agility, good hand-eye coordination, especially in front of the net. This is someone who's gonna chip in rebounds, get pucks out of the air. He's going to do a lot of things in front of the net, screen the goalie. Of course, at 6'5", you expect that. Brady Kachuk this year is someone that we talk about being in front of the net. It's just great net presence. Sarah Noel is that kind of exact same thing. Sarah Noel also, each year, like I said, has developed increasingly better skating and increasingly better skill uh, offensively. And he's relied less and less on the physical side of the games. And so when I mentioned that, this year, 62 games played 61 penalty minutes. 
Last year, 63 games played, 52 penalty minutes. So the penalty minutes barely increased, but when we see 21 points to 53 points, massive increase, you would expect logically penalty minutes to at least increase a little bit more. But certainly he has relied less on physicality to build up his offensive side and more on building that skating to build up his points. And that's the way you have to go. It took Logan Stanley two years to realize that instead of being this physical great hitter, he also has to build offensively, and he has been able to do that. And so, Sarah Noel also has a good release. His shot is very strong. It's very quick. He, he does have consistency issues, and that's one of the main things. Like I said, only putting up 105 shots, there is a consistency issue. And so, he needs certainly to have strong coaching to, to get out of slumps that he's in. But that being said, he's a very hard worker. He's someone who's going to come to the ice early, and he's going to leave the ice late every single day. This is someone who puts in the work 24-7. He's always doing it. And so someone who will have at least some sort of skating struggles throughout his entire career. Of course, the NHL, it's faster game of play. Offensive talents are so much better, but you need better skating to survive there. He's always going to have to work on his skating, and he should be able to do that as a great worker. He also needs to work on his defensive aspect. Like I said, he always has these minus and plus minus. Now, plus minus isn't a great stat, and there's a lot of reasons why. But if you're constantly in the negative when you have high offensive talents, it does say something. And it says that there is a struggling going on. Now, as to why it's happening, is it because of bad defense? Is it because of bad positioning? What is it? That's where the stat isn't great. But it shows that he is struggling. And positioning is part of his issue. He's not always in great defensive positioning. And so, overall, his projection is a top six skilled power forward. He could end up being a first liner if he can continue to build offensively. Next year, if he ends up hitting 90 points, 80 points in the OHL, which is possible if he continues to build his skating overall and his speed overall. But if he kind of has a similar season, kind of like Logan Stanley in his draftless one year, similar season, of course, defender, but, you know, not as much development. We could see Sarah Noel kind of relegate into a grinder. Someone like Chris Stewart, who, uh, yes, was drafted, of course, by the Avalanche in the first round, but recently he's been more of a grinder, of course, with Minnesota for a while in Calgary at the end of the year. Someone who doesn't really have offensive talents, mainly a grinder because of his size. Sarah Noel could result in a game-breaking power forward on the right, or, like I said, a grinder. And so what is the comparable and what is the best fit? Well, the comparable is Blake Wheeler, and the comparison is really there. It's one of the best comparisons we've made in a while. 31 years old, 6'5", 225. So the sizes are almost identical. Of course, he has more weight. But given that he's 31 versus Sarah Noel being 17, it'll pretty much be the exact same. Of course, Wheeler was the fifth overall selection by the Coyotes in the 2004 draft, the Alex Ovechkin draft. And of course, Wheeler played three years for the Bruins and then seven for the Jets. And currently, he's the captain of the Jets. Of course, he's been captain the past two seasons. This year was a game-breaking career year for him. 81 games played, 23 goals, 68 assists, 91 points, 52 penalty minutes, and a plus 13. In the playoffs, 10 games played, 3 goals, 10 assists, 13 points, 6 penalty minutes, and a plus 4. So he has been a positive force, but to only be plus 13 on the ice when he has 91 points, there is a bit of a struggle going on, and positioning has been an issue for him, at least defensive positioning but that being said great playmaker 68 assists of course but also a goal scorer also a physical presence with the 52 penalty minutes now Sarah Noel may never be a 91 point player of course this is a great season for him Wheeler getting to play with Kyle Connor and Patrick Lyon at different points throughout the season now we look at last season for Blake Wheeler probably a better comparison last year 82 games played 26 goals 48 assists 74 points 47 penalty minutes and a plus six so 74 points is possible if Sarah Noel becomes this game-breaking power forward. The 26 goals, of course, is possible. He does have that goal-scoring talent. Now, in Blake Wheeler's rookie season, how did he step onto the ice? This 6'5 player, how did he do? Of course, did he struggle in the skating like many others, or was he able to kind of hit it going quickly? Well, in his rookie season, 81 games played, 21 goals, 24 assists, 45 points, 46 penalty minutes, and a plus 9. It's a pretty good rookie season considering the issues that, by definition, he has being 6'5". Now, of course, 45 points in 81 games, if he was doing that eight years after his rookie season, we wouldn't be too happy about that, considering he was a fifth overall pick. But the fact that he did that as a rookie, as this massive player, as this game-breaking power forward, that's something you really want to see. That's the way exactly Sarah Noel can come in, be this 20-goal, 20 20-assist 20 kind of player once he gets his skating under wraps and once he fully can be consistent and control his overall abilities.
And so Blake Wheeler, he's a good skater. Despite his size, he's been a good skater throughout his career. Speed is decent considering his size, but it's not elite by any means. He has a good shot, but he is inconsistent. Years later after his draft, still inconsistent. That was an issue when he was initially drafted. So Sarah Noel, there is also that comparison, inconsistency. And you also see that with bigger guys from time to time with inconsistency because they do have to focus so much on skating. It is tough to get out a streak sometimes. Now, Blake Wheeler also does not use his size as effectively as possible. Defensively, he can play defense, but he's never been this massive PK player or in, you know, extreme situations when defense is needed. He's never really been that kind of player, but he has been able to do it as of recent and largely because he doesn't use that 6'5 size defensively he uses it more physically and just transition his shot faster quicker and more powerfully and so if he was able to be more defensive of course we would see even more talent from him Sarah Noel very similar doesn't really play defensively but if he can transition his size into at least maintaining the physicality but then transitioning all of it into an offensive side we can see him really becoming Blake Wheeler and so what is the best fit for Sarah Noel well you want to look at a team that either can develop power forwards very effectively or a team that desperately needs right wing talent. And so I think right wing talent is really the answer. Initially, I was thinking the Minnesota Wild, but Jersey Devils will have a draft pick around 20th, probably like 16 to 18, but they will have that draft pick. And the Devils lack depth on the right wing. And so this year, they've struggled on the right wing after the first line. Of course, Palmieri was that first line player. He did a great job with Nico Heischer and Taylor Hall. After that, it's been more of a jumble. Of course, Jesper Bratt did play at different points, but inconsistency has been a massive issue for him, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Patrick Maroon, of course, was brought in the deadline, did do a good job, but he's going to be a UFA. And a lot of people think Edmonton might want to sign him again. Patrick Maroon said he loved Edmonton, so that's very possible. And then uh, uh, Stefan uh, Nielsen, of course, him as well. Interesting struggles with him, only 25. And so when we break it down... They also have no prospects that can play on the right wing, especially none anytime soon. So right wing is a massive issue for them, and they want to add someone who's powerful. They don't have size after Maroon. And so Palmieri, 27, he's 5'10". Nielsen, uh, or um, uh, Brad is uh, 5'10 as well. We look at uh, Nielsen, 6'1", uh, 205. Palmieri is 185. Brad is uh, 174. And so there really is not a lot of size on this at all. We look at Patrick Maroon, 6'3", 225. So he was brought in to be this physical presence who can be offensive, can be a goal scorer. He's not going to be there much longer. Palmieri, this year, 62 games played, 24 goals, 20 assists, 44 points, 30 penalty minutes, and a minus one. In the playoffs, one goal, two assists for three points, six penalty minutes, and a minus four in five games. He's a 2021 UFA. So yes, he is offensive. Yes, he can do a nice job. But he's not a game-breaking right winger who's going to put up 70, 80 points. 44 is very nice especially with someone like Nico Heischer and Taylor Hall. He's a great compliment to them. Taylor Hall being the game-breaking possible MVP this year. Nico Heischer being this great future elite number one center for them. Of course, the 2017 first overall pick. So Palmieri certainly can play well, but I would say he is the third player on that line. It's not really an even line. He's by far the third player. And we look at uh, Nielsen, 25-6-1, 205, like I said, 72 games played, 13 goals, 14 assists for 27 points, only 25, 36 penalty minutes, plus 12. So he's not overly offensive. He's a 2018 RFA. So will Nielsen stay long term? Not so sure. They don't have the right wing depth. So obviously they will resign him, but are they resigning him long term to be this future second line right winger after Palmieri? Not so sure. Nielsen also. Playoffs, four games played, one goal, four penalty minutes, and a plus one. So he did not play all the penalty, he did not play all the playoff games. Not overly offensive. So the right wing is certainly a spot of issue for the Devils. Of course, the Devils are a team that's on the rise. They have a lot of nice talent coming in. Of course, Pablo Zaka is kind of building his game overall. You add in someone like Michael McLeod next season or a little bit down the road next season. This is a team that's getting very talented. Of course, Nico Heischer, Taylor Hall has been great this year. We look on the blue line. Will Butcher's been this great young guy coming in. So, yes, they do have a lot of talent, and it's a fairly young team with this core. We look at Jesper Bratt, 19 years old, 5'10", 174. 26th, uh, he was the 162nd pick in the 2016 draft. 
So he was not expected to be NHL this soon, but he did very well in training camp. He can play on the right or the left. Did play a lot on the second line, left wing at the beginning of the season. A little bit on the right wing with uh, Nico Heischer and Taylor Hall before Palmieri came in. And this season, 74 games, 13 goals, 22 assists, 35 points, 18 penalty minutes, and a minus 16 playoffs. One game he played, no points. The issue with Brad is um, insane inconsistencies. We look in October, 10 games played, 10 points. November, 14 games played, 5 points. December, 13 games played, 9 points. And to this point, he still looked very talented as this nice young guy who's really stepping in. No one really heard of him, and he's doing a great job. January, 11 games played, 7 points. So still, very consistent. February, 14 games played, 2 points. March, 10 games played, 2 points. April, 2 games played, 0 points. So the last 3 months, he finished off with 4 points. And that means his last 30 games of the season, he had 1 goal and 4 assists for 5 points. Considering that he started off point per game, and then even after that, still looked like a 40-50 point score, to then finish with 4 assists and 1 goal in 30 games... That's depressing. That's not the way you want to finish. Now, he's only 19, so certainly he's going to come back and be very talented. But the Devils were not even giving him third or fourth line minutes after these struggles. They benched him for a decent amount. Like I said, he did not play a full season, only playing 74 games. So yes, he was benched for a while, only played one playoff game. So he has been seen as a risk defensively as well. So there's really no depth on the right wing that's substantial. Patrick Maroon came in, 17 games played, 3 goals, 10 assists. 13 points. In the playoffs, five games played only one goal. But that 6'3", 225, he was adding a lot of nice talent for them. And so I think if the Devils can add someone who a year or two down the road can be this very strong power forward on the right wing, one of the best power forwards in the league possibly, but also adding great size and someone who can be very physical and keep that physical uh, tempo going with the team, but also be offensive and not just be this kind of third guy on the line, but someone who can equally contribute onto the line, which they don't have on the right wing as of yet, that could be very good for the Devils. Of course, the Devils have great depth down the middle, great depth on the left. The blue is decent. The goal is interesting, decent. It's a bit inconsistent, but decent. The right wing is that issue. And I think if they can add a right winger this draft, you have to look at someone like Sarah Noel. So thank you guys for watching. I know it was a longer video, but I think there's a lot of talent with Sarah Noel. Certainly he's a risk, but certainly there's so much potential you have to go for it. And he is getting better year after year. It's not someone who's been stagnant. His skating is getting substantially better. So I think there's less risk with him than other players, and he has substantial potential long term. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe. If you know anyone that would enjoy this content, whether it's just looking at the prospects, knowing guys that their favorite team is drafting, whatever it is, feel free to show this channel to them, see if they're interested, share the channel, wherever you want to share it, because I think a lot of people would enjoy this content if they were able to access it. We just got past the one month mark kind of of this content, and so this past month has been great. We gained, I believe it was like 250 subscribers this month, which is insane, over I think 150,000 minutes watched. 23,000 views or something like that. It's, it's it's substantial numbers. It's great to see. So I'm so glad you guys are enjoying the content. And hopefully, you know, we'll keep, we'll keep at it. We're going to make this certainly a place of great hockey content, especially getting towards drafts year after year to look at all these prospects as well. So thank you guys for watching. And of course, I'll see you guys in the comments and in the next video.